Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. I actually think that fun is a make a little bit better. Yes, we do better. Right, Cheryl? Amen. Praise God. But yes, things are already better. Praise God. And I, we don't believe that. We know that for a fact. Amen. Praise God. Because, you know, when you believe something, somebody can come and tell you something different. You can, you know, change your mind a little bit. But we know for a fact. We know. Hallelujah. Because God said it. And if he said it, he said, you know what? Watch over his words to make money. So it's already better. Praise God. Last week, um, praise God, we had a, a very interesting discussion. Praise the Lord. And this week, we're going to continue. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge, um, I don't think he's online. I think he might have been online this morning. But anyway, I want to honor my husband, Apostle McLean. He is not here today. Praise God. He is in, in New York. He's stirring right now. And um, I know God is going to do something amazing where he is, but I still honor him in his absence. Apostle, good to see you Thank again. You. Bless Thank you. God bless you. Welcome. Praise God. Um, like I said last week, uh, well, the week before, as I was preparing and praying and just, you know, spending some time in the presence of God concerning this, this speaking, I don't like, I don't like this position right here. <laughs> I don't like this position right here. I tell people all the time, I would prefer to stay back there and make sure everything is organized and, you know, make sure everything is taken care of. But, you know, God has called me to do this this week, and I'm like, okay, God, all right, <laughs> as you have said. Um, so I was I was waiting before the Lord for those of us who may have not been here or not um, been a part of the service that week. I was waiting in the presence of God, and I was asking the Lord, God, what is it that you want me to share? I mean, I could share anything, you know, I, I could just pick a verse and just talk something, but I really wanted to know what God was saying in this season for us. Praise God. And I remember I was standing under a tree. It was Thursday, about 2, 2.15. I was waiting for Atara to get off the bus, and I was standing under a tree, and I was still just talking to the Lord because I still didn't kind of grow. Um, and I remember people walking by me and probably looking at me talking to myself, but it's okay. You know, and God said, I want you to talk to people about the ministry of obedience. And I, I never understood it at first, but I'm like, okay, um, make it make sense for me. And, and he said, um, the curses and consequences of disobedience and the blessings and benefits of obedience. And so last week, we talked about the curses and consequences of disobedience and we understood what obedience meant, praise God. And so we looked at the grave consequences and we emphasized how disobedience disrupts our relationship with God. It disrupts our entire life. We might not follow her and die immediately like Ananias and Sapphira, but we have to understand that when we are disobedient to God, it affects our finances, it affects our health, it affects our relationship with him, and it affects our children, and so on and so forth. It affects the community that we live in. Praise God. It says it is through us that God is able to impact the community. All right? He has called us to be his hands and his ears and his mouth and his feet on earth. And so when we are not aligned to his will, then everything else goes wrong. He said, if my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So we recognize that when we are out of alignment or, or, or land is out of alignment, our nation begins to suffer, or our world begins to suffer. And so we look at four um, points last week, we look at disobedience um, causing divine retribution, meaning it, it breaches the contract and it warrants punishment, which is often widespread and often severe. It is a contract that God has entered into with us. And when we fail to align with his will, we breach the contract. And then as we know, in, 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 in our terms, when we breach a contract, there are consequences. Amen? And oftentimes those, those consequences are severe. We're not going to go over what we talked about um, last week, but if you want to read it, it's Deuteronomy 28 from verse 15 to about down to like 20 or so. And it tells you 
At one point, the Bible tells us that he will even cause mildew to grow on us. That's that. Praise God. We also looked at the matter of accountability and understanding the seriousness of the communal effect of disobedience. And we reflected on um, the actions of Achan and how the actions of one person caused the entire um, army to be defeated. And so sometimes we think we're in our own world and we're doing our own thing, but we're not realizing that our actions have an effect on everybody else. And so it's important that we stay accountable to one another. It's not that I want to know your business, but I want to make sure that you are on the right path. And if you're not, can I hold your hand and help you to walk the yeah. journey? Amen? We also look at motivation, praise God, and how the fear of God should be a motivation to us to walk in obedience. And when we talk about the fear of God, we're not talking about um, impending doom, but we're talking about the reverence and that all that you have of God, understanding who God is, understanding that he is sovereign Lord and that he has everything in the palm of his hand and and, and that 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 reverence for him will want to, to, to urge you unto righteousness. Yes. Praise yes. God. And finally we talk about um complete dependence on God because we know that God is the blessing giver. He is our protector. He is I am that I am. Whatever it is that he wants to become for us, he is. And so when we depend on him completely, then we won't be tempted to disobey him because we will know that once we are in him, we will have everything that we need. Amen? Yes. And so this week, I want us to turn our focus to the other side of the coin. And we read um, earlier from Deuteronomy 28, from verse 1 down through to verse 14. Um, thank you, Atara, for reading. That was well done. Thank you. And so we're going to look at the blessings and the benefits that come from living a life of obedience to God's command. Praise God. And I promise I will not be long with you today. Um, and I knew it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and so um, obedience, as we discussed, is not merely a matter of following rules. Amen? It has nothing to do with religion. Obedience has nothing to do with denomination or church protocol, or tradition. Nothing whatsoever. Obedience is about maintaining a living, active relationship with our God, the Creator. And when we find ourselves at a place where we are, like the song Sister Mavi uh, raised this morning, just one passion, just one purpose, just to know you more and more, because when I know you, then I find me. Yes. You know what I mean? And when we get to that place in our lives where our heart, that's our heart's cry, then the church rules will become easy to follow. The church protocols will become easy to follow because they are important. They are important, but they are not the meat of the matter. Praise God. Because a lot of us, including myself back in the day, we would follow the church rules, but we weren't necessarily walking in obedience with God. We would take the box We would go to church on a Sunday, and we would go early, we would pay our tithes, we would give our offerings, we would pray, we would do all the things, but we really weren't living a life in obedience to God. And I can I can I can testify of this. I remember and sometimes we like to talk about it and be proud about it. Oh why God called me and I ran away from the call. You should be ashamed of yourself. I say that. Seriously, if we really are going to be honest, right? We talk about it a lot of times, and sometimes it's good to talk and to help others to understand that, you know, it's okay to be afraid and okay to, you know, even feel like you're inadequate. Almost all the men and women in scripture had some uh, a period of their life where they felt like they weren't good enough, okay? But when we're going to come in and we're going to talk about, you know, God called me from 2009 and he gave me this instruction and it took me eight years to, to, to begin walking in my calling. That's embarrassing. That is that is great disobedience. And sometimes we wonder why we are running into a brick wall. Sometimes we wonder why we keep stubbing our toes all the time and we're trying to move forward. Sometimes we wonder why we're not progressing every time we try to move forward and we don't recognize that it's because of the disobedience. Yeah. And so when we get to a place in our lives when we can say truly, truly say just one passion, just one purpose. Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. 
It's just to know you more and more because when I find you, when I know you, I find myself. And even as I'm speaking to you right now, Holy Spirit is really something to my to my attention because I have a oh my God, I have an amazing opportunity standing in front of me right now. Um, oh, I received an email this week for a, a really good opportunity, job opportunity. Um, everything that I, you know, <laughs> would have wanted. And I've been mulling over it for the entire week. And I have not given the people a response yet. And I'm like, God, this is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It will answer these questions and fix these problems over here. But on the flip side, I don't want to enter into any type of covenant that will pull me away from what you're talking to do yeah. on any level. And so I've been kind of, you know, backing and forth with it in my mind. But even as I speak to you right now, like, I, I've just been very, very clear on the answer. Like, God just, ooh, okay. Oh, yes. Thank God. Yes, Lord. Because just one passion, just one purpose. Yes. And, and, and you know, every sometimes, sometimes you really have to be listening. You really have to be listening. Yeah. You really have to be listening. You sure about you read that uh, portion of scripture from the book of Habakkuk this morning. And, you know, even when it doesn't look good, yet I will rejoice. Yeah, I even when it's not perfect, yet I will rejoice. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. Yeah. 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 But like I would say, obedience is maintaining a living, active relationship with God. And it is about aligning our lives with His divine will. So that we can unlock unlimited potential for his purpose, not our own. Praise God. And so just as disobedience brings curses and consequences, obedience on the flip side brings blessings and benefits. Now we're not about prosperity gospel. We're not gonna tell you that if you come to church and shout ten times, God is gonna bless you. We're not gonna tell you that if you sow a seed, God is gonna pour into no, that's not what we're talking about. But the Bible tells us that when we are obedient to God, he will grant us the blessing and the benefit. Praise God. The first verse said, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all he has commanded, praise God, that he, God, will set you high above all nations of the earth. Praise God. The passage says, if you fully, diligently, if you fully obey God. Now, sometimes we may obey some of what he said. Sometimes we may obey him to an extent we're comfortable. <laughs> yes. And like I said, sometimes we talk about it and we don't realize how much we are highlighting the, the, the act of disobedience. Because... I remember when, when, when I was asked to, to share my testimony for the very first time, how I was so nervous, I was so afraid, and I was like, what are people going to think when, when, when they hear where God has brought me from? But when I, and I, and I, when I took the microphone and I shared the truth part, <laughs> very confusing. I shared the truth part that, you know, I was comfortable sharing with people, but I was disobedient. And I thought I was obedient because I shared, but I was disobedient because I knew exactly what God wanted me to do and I did not do it to the fullest. Praise God. And so the Bible tells us that if we fully obey the Lord, now fully obeying the Lord is uncomfortable. My family and I, we left Jamaica in January 2019 and we moved to the United States for a better life. We wanted to live the American dream. I wanted the red Mercedes Benz. She started laughing because she knows I wanted the red Mercedes Benz and I wanted the, the house and the food in the backyard, right? And so we came here and we decided we're going to get her a good job, we're going to save her money, and we're going to live the American dream. And then God said to my husband, <laughs> to my husband, I want you to go into full time ministry. He shared a few weeks ago how when he got his first paycheck, because he got a job when he first moved here before the Lord pulled him away. And um, he shared how he he uh, got his first paycheck. And listen, I already made the budget before the check rolled in the house. Okay? 
I'm like, God, I've been working for four months and I can't even get my nails done. I can't even do my hair. And so my husband was about to get paid, so I started to make a budget. Listen, I like the budget. I like the plan. All right? And then he came home. He set up the dinner table and he said, babe, God said that I should give this as a first fruit offering. I said, God didn't see you. God never saw all these months when I was here struggling to make ends meet. And I didn't even able to do my nails. And if y'all know me, you would know that my nails are important to me, okay? And I didn't see that my nails need to be done. And all of a sudden, you know, God went on. And, you know, I had to, I had to repent. I, I really had to go back to God and cry and get God to forgive me because I was out of mind. I was really out of mind. But, but but obeying God fully is uncomfortable because when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, and it's not because you can't work, but because God said, sit your butt down because I want to do something for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obeying God is uncomfortable. When God tells me to write a book and then my family stops talking to me because I obey God. And I'm all alone in the world because I obey God. Obeying God is uncomfortable. When God called me out of darkness and everybody thinks I'm acting like I'm better than them because I don't want to go party no more. And I don't have an appetite for the weed and the alcohol no more. Obeying God is uncomfortable because they're left with no friends. No friends. You literally have to start from ground zero. Nobody wants to hang out with you anymore because you're boring. Obeying God is forgiving the people who hurt you and turning around to help them, Amen. knowing what they did to you Amen. and doing it with a smile and saying, God, this is up to you. Obeying God is hard. But the Bible says if we fully obey the Lord and carefully follow his command, that he will set us high above all nation. Hmm. My God. The book of Proverbs, verse 3, uh, chapter 3 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my command in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. We can chase money all we want. We can chase success all we want. And a lot of us are on social media and we can see 10 ways to be successful. Yeah. Five key secrets to be successful. We see it all the time. I have the blueprint to success. We see it all the time. But the Bible says there is only one way to ensure peace, prosperity, long life, and success is to fully obey God's commandments and see them in your heart. That is the key. That is the key. And the only key. James 1 says, but whoever looks intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, praise God, yes. not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Last week we talked about another portion of James where he reminds us that we should not just be hearers of the word. Because the word sounds good, the church was nice this morning, but then we leave when we go home and we go back to work. When we start doing the same things that we were doing before, we started engaging in the same conversations that we know are not pleasing to God. We're laughing at the jokes that we know God is turning his face away from. But he says, if you continue in the perfect law that gives freedom, yes. praise God. And do not forget what you've heard, but do them. Then you will be blessed in what you do. Praise God. We're talking about the benefits and the blessing of obedience. Obedience is simple. It may not be easy, but it is simple. There is a difference. There is a difference. Praise God. If you are willing, praise God, and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land, according to the prophet Isaiah. And so we read, praise God, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you 
because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And a lot of times we come to church and we're praying for God to overwhelm us with his blessing and pour out his blessing and open up the windows of heaven and pour out, but yet we are walking in disobedience. When was the last time you got up at three o'clock in the morning to pray? When was the last time you stopped and told a neighbor about Jesus? Or do we just jump in our cars on a Sunday morning and come to church? Because we're following the rules. But when was the last time you opened up your, your space to a stranger and told them about Jesus? I remember the night that I got saved. I was on my way to a, a dance. We call it Jamaica's at a street party. And I, I was high. I was high on weed. I was drunk. And I still had more weed in my hand and more alcohol. And I was on my way. And a stranger called out to me. And the stranger called out to me and he said, you young lady, and he described what I was wearing. He said, God gave me a message for you. And I said, wrong address. <laughs> I said, wrong address. And he called out to me a second time and he said, you young lady, God gave me a message for you. And I said, which God? Because I don't know him. I was very, like, in your face about it, too. And he called out to me a third time and he said, God said to tell you he loves you. And something happened on the inside of me. And it wasn't until, I'm going to say maybe about 2022 when God helped me to understand what that sentence, that phrase that that man told me that night, what it really meant. Praise God. God said to tell you he loved you. I hated God. Because love felt like hate to me all my life. Love felt like hate. And the people who told me they loved me showed me they hated me. <laughs> they abused me. And then they said they loved me. So I associated love with pain. And I remember I was driving down to Reading just myself in the car and, and Holy Spirit, I was worshiping and God said, the reason I had him tell you that that night because I wanted you to understand what true love looks like. Because your whole life you associated love with pain. When was the last time you told somebody Jesus loved them? Or co workers at work, they look like they're happy. But when was the last time you said to somebody, Jesus loves you? Obedience is hard. 1 John 2 tells us we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. We only, so the only way to know that you know God, the only way to be assured that you know God is by keeping his commandments. Have you ever spoken to someone in the street and they told you they're a Christian? But when you look at their lifestyle, you see different. <laughs> because the only way the only way that we know that we have come to know God is if we keep his commandments. The Bible says, I know him, but does he, do, do, I, do I keep his commandments? Praise God. Whoever says I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. And so here we see that obedience positions us for Extraordinary favor and common elevation. He will elevate you above all the nations of the earth. Oh. And the principle is echoed from scripture, revealing that aligning with God's directives opens doors to his abundant blessing. Last week we looked at disobedience and how it impacted um, the individual holistically and how it impacted our community. And likewise, obedience, praise God, impacts every aspect of our life. Amen. And so when we look at um, the scripture talks about personal prosperity, praise God. He said, blessed you will be in the city and blessed you will be in the country and blessed you will be with your flocks and your cattle and your offspring and your herd and your and the fruit of the fruit of your ground will increase. So we're we we're, 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 we're chasing after the job. We're working eighty hours a week. We're 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 doing the things. We're we're 
going after the goals and grinding as we call it. We're all about the hustle, but we're really not obeying God truly. And we and we find that we still live paycheck to bill because it's not even paycheck to paycheck anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and we strive for these things, but the Bible tells us that you wake up early and you go to sleep late. And you strive all for these things, but you end up eating the bread of sorrow because you really do not obey the Lord. And God is calling us to a place of obedience, and especially for those of us who are here and have been here and have been hearing what God has been saying to this church, this group of people in particular, he has been calling us to a place of obedience. I don't care if it's two of us in this room. I don't care if it's a hundred of us in this room. God has said when we come here, he has been speaking to us about obeying him and making sure that our lives are falling in alignment with him because he cannot do anything through us if we are not aligned with him. Yeah. He is not able to use us to accomplish his will on earth if we are not aligned with his will. I remember when the angel came to Mary, she was a young girl, and the angel said to her, you're going to be uh, conceived and bear a child. She didn't, she didn't argue with God. She didn't run away for nine years like some of us. She said, let it be unto me as you have said. Yes. That's it. Are we willing to just fall in alignment and just say, God, it doesn't make any sense to me and it's scary and I don't like it and it's uncomfortable, but let it be unto me as you have said. Yeah. Because I understand that I am not my own. I understand that you pay the price for me, so let it be as you have said. Jesus himself, yeah. the word that became flesh, God in the form of man, said, if you would just let this cup pass from me, I, I, I hate this place where I'm at. I don't like this job. I hate it. These people are getting on my nerves. But not my will. Yes. My girl will be done. I want the big office. I want the six-figure income. But not my will. Your will. Your will be done. Yes. Because sometimes distraction presents itself as opportunity. Yes. And sometimes when the enemy knows that he cannot get you to see you and he can't get you to do this and he can't get you to, you know what he does? He distracts you. Yeah. He distracts you. He presents something in front of you. He tried to do that with Jesus. He said, if you come up to the top of this mountain, I will show you all of the things that I can give this to you if you just bow down and worship me. What did Jesus say? He obeyed the commands. It is written. What is written about your life? What is written about your destiny? What is written about your future? Are we throwing it away for personal gratification? Or are we willing to obey God fully and follow his commandment, commandment so he can bless us according to what he had in store for us? The Bible also talks about um, blessing in our family. He said, the fruit of your body shall be blessed. The fruit of your womb, your children, whatever you produce, it could be your physical womb, it could be your, your spiritual womb, whatever you give birth to, that vision that God gave you that you're giving, you're giving birth to, it will be blessed if you obey God. That, that, that thing that God inspired you to do, it will be blessed. Your children who are following after you will be blessed, praise God, because you decide to obey God. When they leave your house and go to school every morning, you don't know if they're going to make it home. A lot of it depends on you. Are you willing to obey God so that your children can live? The Bible says death and life are before you. Choose life. Choose life. We talked about community success. Praise God. He said you will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Wherever you go, you will find favor. The Bible says Jesus grew in favor with man and God because he was obedient to his father. Even when his mother was getting mad at him, he's like, woman, I know about my father's business. I hear what you're saying. I understand you and I respect you, but at this point, I'm about my father's business. That's more important. That, that's more important to me, right? Yes. What is the thing that God has called you to do? 
but you are still focusing on other things because you think that your source is whatever it is, your job or whatever the case may be. Blessed shall you be when you go out and blessed you shall be when you come in. The Bible says the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way, but they shall flee several ways, seven ways. Last week, the Bible, the same Bible, the same word told us that if we are disobedient, the enemy will come against us seven ways. This is the same Bible that we're reading this week. But if you're obedient, they should come one way and flee several ways. Because you know why? Those that are, um, the God that is fighting for you, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so it doesn't matter what comes at you. It doesn't matter what comes against you. The weapons will form, but they will prosper. They will not. You've seen how many things we've experienced at the hands of the enemy. They were formed, but we're still standing. Because God is still on his throne. Praise God. And there are spiritual benefits. Obedience to God yields both spiritual and practical benefits. Praise God. Deuteronomy 28 verse 9. It says the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. My God. Just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. He has made an oath. He has made a promise. Last week we talked about how God um, entered into a covenant with himself concerning Abraham. And God said, I will watch over my word to perform it. My word concerning you. I will watch over it. It's going to happen as I said it will. Just as I told you. That word that you received when you were probably eight or nine years old that you learned and understood, that word you received when you were 15, when that God spoke over you, he's watching over it, and that's why you're still here. That's why in spite of all the things that you've experienced in your life, you're still here. Glory to God. Because God said, I will establish you as the holy people to myself. Glory to God. Just as he had sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord and walk in his way, he yes. cannot go back on his word. He's not a man that he can lie. His words are yea and amen. And if God said it, it is so. And I don't care what anybody else says. If God said it, it is so. And so you will see, glory to God, the blessing and the favor of God just showing up in your life and you're wondering, how did this happen? I don't deserve to be in this room. I don't deserve to be sitting among these people. I don't qualify for this job. But you are obedient to God. You're following his command. And he has made a promise and an oath concerning you. Praise God. Obedience brings peace and security. Somebody said to me a few weeks ago, she said, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Because whenever she prays for me, she cries to God. And she's like, God, why can't you fix it? But when she talks to me, I'm like, I'm not worried about it. She's like, you're so carefree. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not carefree. I'm confident. Amen. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. Why am I going to worry about it? When God already told me he's going to be. I'm not carefree. I'm confident. Because when I walk, as long as I stay on the path that God has for me, I have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Am I going to experience some challenges? Of course. Am I going to have some seasons in my life that I would prefer Yes. But will I also have the peace that passes all understanding that when the, when the enemy looks at me, it's like, why is she crying? Why is she still smiling? Why is she still rejoicing? Of all the things that I'm doing, why is she still 
And when I came here to America, I was told that, you know, they could take you to HR, they could report you if you, if you try to pray for them, and, you know, they could see that as being offensive and, and blah, 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 whatever the case may be. And even to this day, I go to work, I pull up in a par par parking lot, and I try to be at work a few minutes early, and I sit in my car and I talk with the Lord. Yes. And I ask God to go before me. I ask him to assign angels to go into the building before me. Even to this day, I still do it. Yes. Because I am a minister, I'm a woman of God first, who happens to be a nurse. Yes. <laughs> I'm a woman of God first, who happens to be a nurse. So I am going to do what God has said. Yes. I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always this brave. I wasn't always this bold about it. But I've seen where God has brought me from. Oh, yeah. I've seen him work in my life too many yeah. times. I've seen him come through for me too many times, thank of God. I went to school. I earned a bachelor's degree in nursing. I went back to school. I earned a master's degree in nursing. But when medical professionals told me that a car was dead, God said no. All the test results. I read my own ultrasound report because I need to know what it said before I went to the doctor. I read it myself. Everything said she was dead. God said, give me two weeks. All the degrees went out the window because God said it. Yeah, yeah. Whose report will you believe? God. For two whole weeks, as a medical professional, I laid on my bed and have them anoint me with oil and pray and believe God. Defying all of the principles of medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Defying yes. science. Yeah. Because God said yes. no. You heard her read the scriptures this morning. Yeah. Glory to God. And I thank the Lord at the age of eight, she gave her life to Jesus. Why? Because we were obedient to God. Yes. Yes. My doctor was mad at me until we repeated the ultrasound. And you know what he said? Huh. He said, sometimes these things happen. Oh, so <laughs> That's what he said. He said, sometimes these things happen because he had no other words. Yes. And I remember over the course of two weeks, I doubted for a moment. I said, God, are you sure? Because I'm putting my life on the line at this point. And my spiritual mother, she said, whose report will you believe? And that one question shifted my perspective. And I said, okay, I believe that. And I went in. I went all in. Praise God. Yeah. God wants to see, wanted to see how far Abraham was willing to go for God. God already knew he wasn't going to allow him to kill his son. He already knew that there was a lamb caught in the thicket, but he wanted to see how far Abraham was willing to go. What are you willing to give up for God? I remember when David said to Arona, I need a place to sacrifice. And Arona said, well, you're the king. You can have the whole the, the, the whole threshing floor. In fact, I will go get you a bowl. I'll bring you the wood. I'll bring you the fire. David said, no, nah, I'll pay for it. Because how can I give something to God that doesn't cost me anything? Yeah. What are you willing to sacrifice for me? What are you willing to give up for God? It can't be just life as usual. It can't be just Christians coming to church on a Sunday and we shout and we sing, but then when it, when it really counts, faith is a faith until it's tested. Obedience is obedience until it's tested. Yeah. What are you willing to sacrifice? Job said, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. It's not always going to be comfortable. Praise God. But are you willing to trust him? The role of obedience, glory to God, involves more than just following laws. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle that demonstrates complete trust in God's wisdom. God knows more than me. That's what I'm telling him when I obey him. He knows more than me. He knows what's best for me. When I obey him, that's what I'm telling him. 
Our desires and decisions should reflect his will as we seek his guidance through prayer and scripture. So even when we pray, and I talk to the intercessors about this all the time, even when we pray, it's not what I want to see. It's not necessarily what my heart is saying. Yeah. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked of all that. It's like there's nothing good in us. <laughs> so why am I going to tell God I wish to see this? No. Oh. What did God say? What is God's will concerning this city? What is God's will concerning the people who will stand? The Bible says nobody knows the heart, the spirit of a, I'm sorry, nobody knows the mind of a man unless the spirit of that man reveals it to him. And likewise, nobody knows the mind of God unless the spirit of God reveals it to him. So we have to tap into what God is saying. Learn of him. Seek him so that he can show us things that we know not of. And then we can know how to walk in obedience. Because in our mind, we can think that we're being obedient to God. A lot of times, we think that we're being obedient. But what does God say? What does God have to say about it? We have to align our will with God's will. We have to live out our faith. Practicing our faith. James 2.26 reminds us that the body without the spirit is dead, so that faith without works is dead. So if we say we love God, if we say, the Bible tells us if we say we love God, we have to obey his commandments. So if we say we are walking in obedience, our, our life has to mirror that. When people look at us, they have to see that we are acting accordingly. They have to see that we are not, we're, we're, we're standing for truth. We're standing for righteousness. We're standing for justice. We're not afraid to speak out against wrong. We're not afraid to walk away from a job if they try to make you do stuff that is outside of what God said. And when people see you do that, they will have respect for you. I was in a job, I think, over a little over a year ago. And I walked into the building. I was working as a supervisor in the building. And I walked in and I got a report about something that happened the morning before I got to work. And unfortunately, it so happened that the incident caused uh, the life of somebody. And before the end of my shift that night, I, I had to you know, get the person to a higher level of care. And unfortunately, she died. And I got a call from my boss asking me to change a few things in the report that I wrote. And I told her, I said, I came into this building with my integrity and I'm leaving with it. And I walked away. I left the job. I resigned immediately. How was it a few weeks ago they called me asking me if I'd be willing to come back? Yeah. I told them no. You know why? I appreciate the fact that they can see that I stand for something, but I'm not willing to go there in an environment where you're expected to compromise your integrity just to look good. You know what I mean? And so we have to stay. We have to demonstrate our faith. We have to live it out. We can't just walk, uh, talk the talk, but we have to walk the walk. Because too many times you find people, they stand in the pulpit and they will tell you what to do. But when you look at their life, it doesn't necessarily reflect the things that they say. And sometimes you recognize that this is the reason a lot of people have no respect for the church and for the people of God. Because we say one thing, but we do something different. And so I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect. But we are going to strive for righteousness. The Bible says, be ye holy as God is holy. So it should be our desire every day to strive for holiness. And when we finish the day and we look back at what we did today, if we didn't see everything looking all right, we bring it to the Lord and we say, God, please help me to fix it. Because tomorrow I want to do better. It's not a matter of being perfect. It's a matter of obeying God and doing everything that you can do to stay in his will at whatever cost. Praise God. And so we want to make sure that we are staying committed to what God has said. We want to make sure that we are standing on the truth of what God has said. 
Because if we disobey God, we are going to reap the consequences. Yes. It may not be today, may not be tomorrow, but we are going to. And sometimes we will see things happening in our lives and in the lives of our children and we wonder, why is this happening? Somebody is working witchcraft against or, you know, I'm just not lucky or whatever the case may be, but we're not realizing that it is our disobedience. So let us stay committed. Let us stay committed. Let us read the word, hear the word, understand the word. Ask Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and understanding so when God speaks, we can know what he's saying and we can move accordingly. Do not just be hearers, but be doers also. Do not just say that we are children of God. Do not just say that we are Christians, but let us live accordingly. Let us stand up for righteousness, justice. Let us stand up for truth. Let us declare the truth of God everywhere that we go and not be afraid to stand up and say, I am a child of God and I will live for him. And even if it means that you're going to be cast aside by society or, or hated by, by other people, God will put you in the right crowd. God will align you with the right people who are on the same path as yourself, who are willing to suffer for righteousness' sake. God said, if any man would follow me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Yeah. Yeah. God never promised that the walk was going to be easy and it's always going to be smiles and roses. But he did promise that he will never leave you. That he will never forsake you. He did promise that if you stand in him for real, for real, that the weapons that are formed against you will never prosper. He did promise that if you stand up for real, for real, he will fight for you. He said, The Pharaoh that you see today, you will not see him tomorrow. But you have to walk in obedience. Do not be like the children of Israel who took 40 years to complete an 11 day journey. Mm -hmm. Delaying your success, delaying access to God's promises because of this obedience. Yeah. Let us find out from God, what is it that you want me to do? Where is it that you want me to be in my life? What are the things that you want me to put aside, to put away, so that my life can truly reflect your righteousness? That should be your prayer. How can I please you today, God? Do we even do that? We wake up in the morning, God, how can I please you today? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Our life is nothing if we are outside of our life this time. Meaningless. No purpose, no nothing, no fulfillment, nothing if we're outside of alignment with God. But are we willing to make that kind of sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to be uncomfortable a little bit so that God can be glorified? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to really surrender our lives to God and say, God, nothing that I do is for me. I want all my life, my whole life, to bring you glory. Are we willing to really <laughs> are we willing to really make that declaration? My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I feel. I give myself. I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I feel. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. 
everybody in here this morning really just want to give yourself away. You really just want to say, God, one word for all. One word for all, God. I just want to do right by you, God. If this is your heart's cry this morning, I want to invite you to pray. Praise God. Setting everything else aside. It is you in your life, Lord, I'm to see your deep everything in me. I give myself away. I give myself away, so you can use me. Are you willing this morning to give yourself away? Are you willing this morning to say, God, here I am. I don't have all the answers and I don't have it all together. But I want to give my life to you. I want to give my whole life to you. Everything that I have, everything that I am, everything that I hope to be, I want to surrender it to you this morning, God. I don't want to go another day and not be in complete alignment with your will. If this is your prayer this morning, I would like to pray with you. You could be saved. You could be not saved, but your desire is to be a hundred percent in alignment with Jesus. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away. So you can use me. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for the presence of your own spirit. I thank you for your word this morning, God. I thank you for the mighty of the Lord God Almighty. How important it is to walk in obedience with you. I thank you, oh God, that you remind us this morning that if we truly say that we love you, we have to demonstrate that love by following your commandments. I thank you, mighty God, for this opportunity that you have given us, mighty God, to make it right with you. I thank you, oh God, that you never cast us aside, oh Lord God, but you saw, mighty God, that we needed you. You saw that we needed your presence this morning, God, and you came, oh Lord God, and you dwelt amongst us, and you spoke to us. God. We thank you this morning, Lord God, that you cannot look on all the things that we've done or all the things, mighty God, that we fail to do. But God, you're calling us into a deeper relationship with you. You're calling us, mighty God, into a deeper place of alignment with you. Father God, I pray this morning in the name of Jesus Christ and much of it. That the hearts of your people will hurt, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you will work for the things that we go after, the things that we seek after, the things that we long after, God, will bring glory to your name, oh Lord God. I pray, mighty God, that we will not elevate anything else above you, that you God, you will be highly exalted, that you alone will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you Oh, because you are Lord. Father, because your word tells us that the righteous are as bold and quiet. I pray this morning that as our hearts cry out to you, God, that you will hear us from heaven. Go forward to God that you will forgive our sins, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray that you will come, oh Lord, and bring us so much to the market. Help mighty God and restore us up to your best. Help us, O God, so that we will put aside the sins that yes. don't easily be Help us, O God, so that we set aside the things that don't please you. Yes. Break our hearts, O God, the things that break your O God, give us the vision that we can see and you see. Give us the wisdom of the things that we 